who's also hosting a parallel event uh, as we speak, a 24-hour parallel event. And we're really grateful that we got pulled on, that we got, you know, that we joined this partnership and the journey continues. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Peter. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, share my screen. Or Peter, right, I'm gonna open up the next session, Lisa. We've got about four minutes. Yep. Um, should so, I've got the uh, the session uh, card all ready to go. Let me um, see if I can do that. All right. Um, And uh, so let me, um, should I start, Lisa? Yeah, great. Let's go ahead and introduce, I think they're both here. Yep, we're ready to they go. They're both here, yes. My, our good. These are two good friends. This is also my own uh, home time zone, being in Sacramento, California, so I'm wide awake now. I, I want to tell you that I'm sure Amna and Lisa have been up almost all night because World Future Day started at 8 p.m. Pacific time and went all through the night, as you all know. So it's uh, it's great to see you too, uh, both of you. Uh, yes, um, this is a session on creating the future through education innovation. So we have two different uh, kinds of people who will be telling us about innovation and education. Amna Habiba uh, is the younger facilitator in this session. She was named the 2022 Global Teen Leader. I mean, she has more honors than any 10 people that I know, but nevertheless, Global Teen Leader, the HP Girls Save the World finalist, the Che Global Student Prize finalist, the Voice of Gen Z, uh, if that's not enough. Amna is a youth activist, a public speaker, founder of Bloom Ed, uh, uh, a, a, a nonprofit that she created in her home country of Pakistan to help uh, young women get into STEM careers. Undergraduate, she's an undergraduate student at the University of Toronto studying microbiology and currently the Director of Youth Innovation and Technology at Teach the Future. Omna, we can't wait to hear what your in innovations in education are going to be. Uh, I have, I'm sorry, Daniel, you're the older facilitator. I know you're still very young, but you're the older facilitator in this one. Uh, Daniel de Santa Ana Martins is a father a ludologist. Now you're going to have to explain what a ludologist is. I know, but I don't want to, I don't want to give away. I don't want to create the spoiler. I'll let you tell people what a ludologist is. He is a futurist, a designer, an educator, and a researcher with a master's degree in design. As CEO of D plus one design and games, he specializes in developing ludocentric learning experiences, impacting over a million students globally. His work has earned him several awards, including the Brazil Creativo Award from Brazilian Ministry of Culture in 2023. With more than 20 years of experience, Daniel has worked as a freelancer and in agencies, also contributing to education through game development courses across Brazil and roles in significant additional projects. Um, let's see. All right, so this is a, uh, Daniel will also uh, show us uh, one of the games that he has developed and that we've actually played at Teach the Future. It was, it was marvelous. And so with that, I will turn it over to Amna and to Daniel to tell us about uh, the creating the future through education innovation. So take it over, both of you. Thank you, Peter. Um, I'm really glad to be here. And, and be with Amna, who is more amazing than, than I was <laughs> when I have 18 years old. <laughs> Agreed with that 100%. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. I'm excited to be here with Daniel, too. And we will be playing the game today for this session. Daniel would like to go through our slides. We have a slide deck, and then we're going to go into breakout rooms. So a lot of things planned for our session. Yeah. So every, again, uh, thank you everyone for being here tonight, at least it's tonight here in Brazil. Um, I will start sharing my screen with you. Um, can you see the screen? Yeah, I think it's yes, we can see. okay to go. So how this will work? Um, I'm going to introduce some a few concepts about 
how to think about the future um, with this game that I created. And Anna will help me uh, guiding you guys and girls uh, at the chat box. And mm -hmm. she can interrupt me at any time to, to make a comment either for, from you or from uh, other person in the chat box, okay? So feel free to, to reach out and say your comments and, and let's make this a conversation and not a lecture. So um, again, thank you everyone for being part of this. Um, I'm really proud of this game um, because it was one of my first experiments uh, in thinking about the future and futures thinking. Uh, as I was saying to Emna um, earlier this day, I often try to understand things by making games of them. So that's what uh, present of the future is, is an attempt to understand concepts of futures thinking and um, um, speculative design. So, I start our, our conversation with these two uh, news from the future, from from um, uh, 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 a further timeline, a time frame. Um, the first one uh, tell us about um, a social measure in a government here in Brazil, where a community barbecue. Is, is hosted by Rio de Janeiro government uh, and all the food is created in, in laboratory. And it's access free to everyone who wants to use the labs. And it's a, it's a, a new news uh, created by a group of uh, young fellows like Amna in a work session uh, 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 of the game that I hosted, I think, a couple of years ago. And the, the right one is a news from the future that um, a great friend of mine called Peter Bishop <laughs> actually developed uh, when we played the game with uh, the, the Teach the Future members, uh, I think, a year ago or, or maybe a, a two years ago. So. The, 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 both the news uh, were created by using the gameplay during the gameplay of the game. So if I if I explain right, uh, by the end of this session, we will add more news, more optimistic news from the future uh, created uh, by you guys and girls of this session. So. Um, let me start not only with this news, but with a question. Um, do you do by living or, or work what you said you wanted to do? I remember a time when I was a kid. It was a long time ago. <laughs> um, I was this little fellow in the middle of the photo. Um, and at our homework, uh, assign it to me, I had to answer the the hard question, what I want to do when I grow up. And I answered in that uh, homework that I wanted to be an engineer of things. And my parents, of course, didn't understood what I mean by that, because it's a made up profession. It didn't exist back in, in the 80s when I wrote out the the, the essay. Uh, but the funny thing about made up professions is that I'm also a designer. And when I think about the design field of 10 to 15 years ago, UX design, it was something that didn't exist. Um, like the TikToker, which is a, a, a profession very famous these days. Uh, like esportes, uh, all of them are professions that didn't exist uh, a few years ago. But at some point, reality um, acknowledged them 
and and new technologies and changes enable them to happen to exist so uh and 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 a few years ago uh a research held by uh institute for the future uh said that 85 percent of professions on the marketing in 2030 still do not exist so at some point someone will cre create new professions when the time is 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 okay to for them to to exist and no matter the the, the profession it's important for us as educators as fathers and mothers as people that are um um interest in education to teach not only uh, those technical skills for the new professions, but some other skills that are important to any profession that we'll have in the future, like uh, complex problem solving skills, critical thinking, and creativity. And the beauty about futures thinking is that we can teach that um, for our kids and for our students right now in the present uh, so they can perhaps create one of these new professions so far so good everyone if you have any comments you can write down on the chat box okay thank you beth um so what actually are future studies if you are new uh, to this field, or is your first day hearing that? It's your first session uh, connecting with this uh, field of knowledge. Um, uh, future studies is an art and a science approach with strong emphasis on imagination and creativity in creating different possible futures. So this is the definition by World Future Studies Federation. And a few years ago, I stumbled with this beautiful uh, 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 diagram uh, from designer Masaki Iwabuchi, trying to map all the design approaches uh, that currently are running in the, the different fields that connect and, are, uh, uh, and have some sort of synergy. And in the future studies field, there's a lot of uh, uh, subfields and specific areas of knowledge. And, and oh, I, I'm seeing that uh, people are chatting in the chat box. That's us. nice. Beatriz just answered uh, Beth's question. What is sense making? Sense making is the ability to make sense of data, to rely, really understand what our research and signals and trend means, uh, because that's one of the main activities uh, of a futurist is to collect data and make sense out of them. It's a it's a brilliant field. It's really amazing, but it's important when you uh, start studying future studies uh, to understand what actually is your makes your heart bit more more strong. Uh, for me, I really love speculative design and critical design and, and flirt with uh, science fiction and art to create that sense making through the appreci appreciation of uh, futures artifacts and games and experiences. So it's important uh, at some point you reflect on what makes more sense to you. And when you, we are thinking about the future and creating different futures, we always speak in, in plural because we are not trying to predict the future because since it doesn't exist yet, we can create multiple futures depending on our uh, approach or our visions or the archetype of uh, future we are trying to, to, to design uh, as presented by the futures con uh, developed for, from uh, Voros back in 2003, before even Emna was born. <laughs> so <laughs> futures, future studies is that, that old. <laughs> so 
basically, um, we're trying not to make predictions, but assumptions, but uh, propositions about the future. Um, and there's this, this, this sentence, this quote from Jim Dator, which is also another honorable futurist, uh, that states that every useful proposition about the future must at first seem ridiculous, but not every ridiculous proposition is useful. But to make ridiculous proposition, we need to enhance our imagination. Uh, for example, at some point at history, someone stated a ridiculous proposition about uh, let, let, let us give women the same political rights as men. At least here in Brazil, it, it works uh, that way. Um, it started as a ridiculous proposition and now is reality. So that's the, 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 the powerful thing about thinking about the future and imagining and creating futures. We started with a proposition, maybe a, a ridic ridiculous one, and then by working through the time, creating strategies and assembling the right people at the right time, we can make that happen. So uh, like, like, like as Beth uh, is saying, uh, like universal basic income, it started like a sparkle of change. And at some point, everyone start to dream with that future and make it happen. So uh, it's important for us as human beings start to pay attention on that uh, uh, sparks of change. Amna, do, do you want to comment and, or say something? I just had a question from the previous slide. So you talk, you said, well, the quote says that not every ridiculous idea can be um, useful and the other way around. I was just wondering if you could expand on it specifically and what exactly does that mean when it comes to specific trends? Let's say you mentioned about um, you know, voting for women. You mentioned um, the universal income that was just shared in the chat, but I'm wondering if there's anything specific that is useful and which is always ends up being ridiculous, but how do you differentiate between something like that then? That's a great question, and I actually don't have a proper answer. So let's think together um, how to interpret this that Jim Dater said. I believe that um, only time will say that a proposition is ridiculous or not. Okay, but it's important. The main goal here, the, the, the great concept here is to feel free to, to think and to create and to propose no matter uh, uh, the evaluation or criticism from other people, but through our own criticism um, and, and, and the, the, as the time passes, uh, we can interact and reflect about the implications of those statements, of those views of future. Uh, so it's important to not hold you back when thinking about the future. I think, I think the, the statement here is that uh, no idea is fully formed and no idea is completely ridiculous. But we, we need to to assume a stance like a child who is um, uh, innocent and, and truly believe that something is possible, no matter how hard um, uh, the, the scenario or the conditions uh, shows us. So it's important to, to behave and think like a child without assumptions or, or, or concerns and things like that. I don't know if I answered the question, but it's- I think the, sort the, of it, it is pretty open to interpretation because as yeah. you said about the future code itself, like nothing is definite, right? Like all of yeah. these futures, all of these outcomes can happen and it can fit in any part of the cone. So there's really no way of really 
100% predicting what happens in the future, but there is a way of sort of thinking of the many futures that are possible yeah. and building towards the best one then, I guess. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, thank you for, for that. And as I said, as futurists, we are searching for changes, for um, forces of changes or signals of change or trends, and we are trying to make sense out of them. And I do that as a ludologist, and Peter asked me to explain what actually a ludologist do. Um, I'm a professional uh, uh, person who thinks about uh, ludicity and the expressions of that ludicity, like games. Games is one expression of ludicity, but there's other forms to express uh, that that thing um, like uh, humor, comedy, um, uh, the 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 free free form of play uh, from a kid, a toy is an expression of ludicity, and as a ludologist, I'm interested in how those things, how those expressions manifest in society and also create meaning. So. Since I'm a ludologist and a futurist, I often pay attention to what changes and, and possibilities, games, and what other uh, uh, fringe groups of society brings us. For example, uh, in the, the pandemics, we had um, a, a music show uh, hosted by Fortnite, uh, which is a game. Uh, a massive multiplayer game, um, a show from Travis Scott, which is a, a, a rapper. And th it was the first time that that thing happened. And after that, after that signal, that bubble from the future happening in the present, people started to look to Fortnite and, and, and come out with an idea, whoa, maybe we can use that platform uh, as a form to, to deliver not only musical uh, uh, concerts and shows, but maybe lectures, maybe uh, 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 classes, maybe uh, it's uh, more than just a game. It's, uh, it's a, a, portal, a portal for another reality that we can uh, also uh, achieve some some sort of meaning uh, by playing with that platform. So it started as a strange thing, uh, uh, unique, and then uh, it started to grow. And games and other uh, fringe groups from society uh, often brings us those bubbles from the future. Ludicity, okay. Um, it's hard to, to for me to explain what is ludicity because <laughs> I have a proper word in por Brazilian Portuguese, uh, but ludicity is. Let me see if I can do that. Uh, it's um, it's it's where imagination. Uh, uh, it's it's I don't know. It's a, a form of energy or a behavior that we can have. So we can use our imagination and playfulness. Playfulness, it's the word that I'm looking for. Uh, ludicity is similar to playfulness, uh, I think. <laughs> so, uh, so sorry if it's a lame interpretation and, and definition. But again, it's hard to explain <laughs> in another uh, language what ac ac actually uh, ludicity means. In Portuguese, is ludico. Ludico, from Ludus, uh, uh, from Greek, it's a Greek uh, uh, word, uh, meaning uh, this uh, make-believe, uh, the, the, the territory of play, the territory of imagination, uh, some sort of that. Okay, so uh, I look often to games and, and, and that gaming communities and the youth uh, like Amna um, 
to to see the possibilities and and i stumble often with different signals and trends like playable cities the concept of play and interact in a playful playful way with cities with artifacts with uh, systems with uh, governments uh, apps and 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 all sort of uh, uh, production intellectual production uh, d derived or within a city um, i i design learning games because i understand games not as mere artifacts but as a language to again promote meaning and create a uh, 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 sense making uh, for education and for kids. And we have a lot of different signals and things like that. And what I try to achieve with present of the future, and now I will explain the rules so we can play and have time to discuss our creation, um, is the concept that the, the name of the game present of the future has a, a dual meaning. Uh, present is at the same time a gift and also a time frame. Uh, it's a gift from the future happening right now in the present. So this is the main concept of the game. So playing the game, we will design an optimistic statement of one future, not the future, but one possible, probable, plausible uh, or preferable feature okay so it's a uh, 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 it's a game that enhances our creativity using data from signals and or values or uh, biases or the things that we want to see in the future in an optimistic way because nowadays it's hard to to imagine optimistic futures when we we see tv television and the news uh, all the war all the awful things that are happening in the world so the game tries to enhance up to uh, an optimistic view from the future okay we, we use signals and trends in a proper session uh, we have uh, a, a few signals and trends collected but uh, you can use signals, trends, news, things that you already possess, already know, to create a, 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 a something out of this statement, the optimistic statement that we're going to, to, to make. It's important to use no, no aliens, no apocalypse, no time travel, no supernatural things. Uh, we are not trying to make a preposterous future use of that a type of future but the other ones the preferable probable plausible and possible futures so how this game works let me show you this is the board of the game it's really huge and it grows uh, as the 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 time passes uh, since the the first time i created back in 2020 now we have uh i think 10 times more cards and possibilities with this game. So what you're going to do now is in the chat box, we're going to vote democratically um, in what is the statement that we are going to work with. Okay? So the first uh, uh, um, uh, uh, card that we, we're going to choose, it's how many years from now what is the time box? How how much further in the future we want to work? And just to be clear, when we, we are talking about the future, we often start at 10 years from now. So uh, we're going to choose when this future will be held and, and, and what is the time frame that we want to, to work. So I will ask you for, for you, uh, everyone to write down on the chat box how many time, how further in the future you you want to work. So right, right now, 25, okay, 25, 25, 25 yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> I think we have a winner. You can choose one of those cards you are seeing on your screen because unfortunately, Chandran, there is no 
20 years in the future card where we have 25, 10, 15, 30, 42. And because we have a uh, little time, uh, I will pick this card here and put here to start to form our statement about the future. So in 25 years from now, we will solve, solve uh, a problem or part of a problem represented by some of these cards here. And we need on our creation address specific aspects of the problem context that we are working with uh, in our solution. So we have 10 cards. This is, these are the icons of the card. And as you can see, we don't have a label or, or a subtitle or a title uh, whatsoever in the card because it's up to your interpretation of that icon, what that problem is. So just to be easy to, to, to choose, uh, this is the uh, one card, two card, third card, fourth card, and so on. So choose now at the chat box. Um, what is the number of your card, you, you, the card you want to work with on our creation uh, this evening? Beth said five, the five card education. <laughs> okay, uh, there's no uh, subtitle, but okay, uh, uh, I, I said education because as a game designer of the game, <laughs> I, I, I thought on education when I used that, uh, that icon, okay? Equality of genders, 70 card, five education is great for me too. So let's go make this decision haste. So let's go with education. Nice. It's always a topic that I love to discuss since I'm also an educator. So let's read the statement so far. In 25 years from now, we will solve the education problem, not the whole education. It can be a tiny problem within the, the, the education area uh, as a whole. Okay. And we solved that problem because a group of people, what people? Let me check. Those people. And we have a professional uh, 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 area represented by one of those illustrations at the card. And by playing the game, we have to think like those professionals or maybe use their tools and methods to come out with idea of how to solve that problem. So choose now. Uh, first card, second, third, fourth, up to 10. Um, scientists. Uh, I think that's uh, the first card. <laughs> then five scientists again. We have two votes for the first card. Uh, three, three votes, gamers, okay. <laughs> You are the, the gamers. It's funny because, again, we don't have a, a subtitle or a title, nothing to declare what that profession is, but your biases and your interpretation of the, the, the cards uh, are, are, are being held on, on the chat box. So I think scientists were the, the most voted, okay? Sorry to cut you off, but there's just this one comment in the chat that I have to read out. BSS Gamer Scientist. I <laughs> wish we had a com combined symbol with both the gamer yeah, and the totally. scientist. Totally. It would be would be awesome to, <laughs> to have some sort. Maybe, maybe be a uh, be Alcantara, you can uh, come out with that profession because it don't exist, but you can uh, propose that exists and then uh, uh, start out uh, doing uh, the mix of those two areas of knowledge. Uh, it, it will be awesome. I totally do that for a living because I think it's cool. So in 25 years from now, we will solve the education problem or one education problem because the scientists created a project. What project? Uh, we need to come out with a, a feasible solution 
uh, that shows itself with a, a type of project. So what scientists created to solve an education problem? And again, we have all those cards with different interpretative icons. So first card, uh, it's a type of project, a, a project of that type. Uh, the, the fifth card, okay. So the fifth card, it's a um, consumable uh, 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 artifact. Um, maybe uh, uh, something that you consume and, 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 and you spend by using it. Okay, like uh, I don't know, uh, a shampoo, uh, 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 maybe a cloth, maybe I don't know something that uh, 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 can end. <laughs> it's a consumable good. Okay, um, medicine for networking. Okay, hand with gear, uh, some sort of engineering project, medicine, games. <laughs> okay. A game, scientist, educational program. I think a program can be something like this, represented by this card, legal. So, what are Amna? Help me out here. What is there the card with most votes? It might be difficult to make a decision yeah. on this one because <laughs> okay. we don't have a consensus on even one of them. So let's see. Does anyone? Want to be the tiebreaker to yeah. for one of the four options that have been shared in the chat? So Maybe we have you can medicine. Go. You can go. You can. Okay, you, I can go. Can, yeah, you can vote. Of course, you can. Okay, I, I'll vote. So I'll vote for the hand on gear because I think we can do a lot of things with that one. This this one. Yep, this one. Okay, so scientists make. Uh, made a, a project, uh, some sort of engineering uh, project. It doesn't matter the type of engineering that's in important. Uh, and you can be imaginative because it's a scientist engineering something. Huh? <laughs> what will uh, come out by this, uh, with this? And we have our statement. So in 25 years from now, we will solve an educational problem because scientists created a, 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 some sort of engineering project. And we will try to explain that project, that solution that actually solved one problem 25 years from now in a form of a news, a news from the future. And what you will have to do uh, now we, we're gonna split you, you folk, on uh, breakout rooms so you can discuss with your peers um, and try to come out with at least a headline from a, a news from the future that explain that that thing that were created to solve the problem. It's simple as that. I know it's hard because you have to be imaginative, and again, you have to think like a like a child. You have to be creative, and I know that some of you may say, "Oh, I'm not that creative." That's why you're gonna split you in breakout rooms because someone will be creative at that group. <laughs> uh, how many people do we have on this session? So at the moment we do have 16 and as you said we're making breakout rooms of three people per group yeah maybe three three breakout rooms uh, with three to four people it will work and we're gonna give you uh 15 minutes to come out with a solution that um uh, that statement statement says again in 25 years from now we will solve a pro an educational problem because scientists created uh, uh, some sort of engineering pro uh, project and you will have to explain in a form of news from the future from 25 years from now it will be 2049 it's a pretty nice number <laughs> okay you have to i will send i can send you later but since we we are running out of time I will not send you now. You can reach out later 
with me and I will send you the link, okay? Because it's not the paid version of Miro. So we, we have, I have some uh, restrictions of how many people I can uh, uh, invite for that board, okay? Setting 2049, we can uh, now make the breakout rooms and you can go. You can feel free to, to, to go to the breakout rooms, okay? And have fun creating the solution. Okay, room five is full. Uh, room two, almost full. Room eight with two people, okay. <laughs> Peter is um, supposed to go to room, room the first room. Uh, there's... No, 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 don't, don't send me, don't send me. <laughs> okay, I okay. I came back. Let's make us a room for ourselves. I, I wasn't. No, I wasn't following. <laughs> I don't want to. Uh, you know, I don't want to cheat you guys. You know, I, I, <laughs> the only time I played, I, I'm 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 batting a hundred percent. I don't want to do it again. <laughs> Actually, we have a, a winning condition for that game. I know, um, people vote on it, don't they? Yeah, people yeah, vote. No, I know. I won the game. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I, know I just had a winning condition. To, to I don't want to ruin else. my track record. I'm a hundred percent. <laughs> and and it was amazing to see how easily <laughs> you came out with an idea and a, a news from the future. Well, it was I, just I, like that. <laughs> well, it's like I told you, this is not my first rodeo. Come yeah, on. I know. Scenarios for about 50 years or 40 years at least. So, yeah, <laughs> it was so I easy. Did, I hope I did a little bit better than average after all this time. Of course, I didn't expect to win, but I, a little better than average. All right. Well, I want to play. Oh, go for it. Yeah, jump in. Oh, oh, uh, Daniel, put Lisa in a room. Put her in number two. I was in number two. Where Daniel? Oh well, okay. I can jump. I can jump in a room. All right, we can play here because we're live on YouTube, and uh, this is the room. This room is is the other rooms are not being live streamed. But we lost. Did we lose Daniel, Peter? Where did Daniel go? Yeah, I don't know. I don't. I. Oh, well, hopefully he'll jump back on, and we'll let him in here. Well, I thank you for uh, for you know filling in there. It's a little improv. I think we did pretty well for all that, huh? We should open up our own little talk show. What do you think? I Elisa, I was waiting for Elisa the moment. And Peter show. <laughs> I was waiting for the moment, Peter, that it would come up, it would dawn upon you that it we would make. <laughs> Are you exhausted? Um, Are you adre or Is it mostly adrenaline? Are you exhausted? Did you get any sleep? I I did. I did. I, I wouldn't call it sleep. <laughs> rest. You'd have rest. rest. Okay. I closed, I closed my eyes, but believe it or not, I, I had WFD. So we're live on YouTube. Hi, YouTube. We're just the, we're the oh, non-breakout <laughs> non room room. Yeah. I will say I had my eyes closed with the WFD in the background, subliminally hoping all, all of the conversations and messages will just sit in there and I'll wake up like some sort of future genius. And just, well, I told you that I was, uh, yeah, I had a dream too before the first session at eight and I dreamt I couldn't, I I, I wasn't going to run. I thought I was going to give a talk at the beginning and that was okay. I didn't, but I, but I had, the dream was I couldn't find my laptop. So I was racing around and I, and I said, well, I don't need the laptop. I have a desktop on the desk. And I went to the desk and the desk was full of tools and soldering equipment and everything I touched was hot. <laughs> and it was two minutes before eight, <laughs> two minutes before things are going to get started. So I was, uh, it, we were both dreaming crazy dreams to get ready. For Daniel, I'm a, I'm a bit activated. I want to play the game. Can me Daniel, there, Daniel's of back. Of course, I'm, I'm back. I don't know what happened because <laughs> I was, I, I think, uh, uh, forced to join. You the, were doing, the... Oh, you put, yeah, yeah. Omna didn't exempt you. Okay. <laughs> and Omna's in the game now too. So, uh, Daniel, you're you're the co-host. Can you share the screen again so I can see the okay. prompt? Yeah, the, yeah. What do we have? Ten minutes. That's a long time to think of something. So it's a whole. Is it a whole narrative? No, it's 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 not necessarily a whole narrative. We so can play the game. Just... Play the game with uh, Lisa. She wants to play. Okay. So, um, we in a in a more. Uh, normal and and having time to play the game properly 
uh, we, we will collect signals uh, from maybe just a simple PESTO analysis. And with those signals, we're going to come out with uh, an idea that solves the problem and fulfills the statement that we created. So, for example, um, I can maybe um, say that a problem that I want to solve is uh, infrastructure uh, and, and accessibility uh, for proper education uh, for kids in long distances. So maybe the scientists created a, a satellite uh, because it's an engineering type of uh, a project and they release it uh, on our atmosphere and with a chain of uh, uh, those satellites, we, we covered uh, uh, free internet for everyone to access um, um, an application or, or virtual classes uh, for different topics. And we accessibilize uh, education for third party countries, for example. So that's a way to, to, to play the game. Uh, uh, the more signals and data and, and information you have, um, more creative you can be. And you can also deliver and, and create not only one uh, new news, uh, but how many news you, you, you want. You can iterate and, and make something out of uh, the, the, this first draft concept. Uh, and news from the future is not the only way to present the solution. Uh, with, if we are playing the game um, in a, a physical session, we can, for example, uh, create a narrative or a drawing, or maybe we can describe what we are seeing of that project, or maybe we can make a, 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 an artifact, a prototype using Lego pieces or maybe Play-Doh or, or something like that. There's a whole different ways, how, or, or whole different perspectives, how to present or represent that solution that we are trying to achieve. So it's important to, to acknowledge that um, this statement is true. We solve the problem. There's no halfway here. We solve the problem. Um, and by imagining that, we enhance and boost optimism and creativity skills and maybe critical thinking because we can, we can from the artifact that we are creating, think about implications, think about what will happen if that uh, uh, project actually exists, what can go wrong or what can go really right uh, with that uh, scenario based on the artifact that we are creating. Okay, so uh, you got all cleared. That's how we play the game, basically. It makes sense? Yeah, it makes sense that the game really forces, not forces, activates, activates. Yeah to 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 activate that muscle that that imaginary muscle but also you know the signals and the trends that's a whole that's a whole component that there's no time for right now but i'm sure that yeah. that's all stimulating and then uh, interacting with others so it, let's take a crack at it let's okay. see if if anyone could uh, uh achieve something maybe a new uh let us check Okay, I see Adam. Hello, Adam. How are you? Hello. Hello, I'm well. Thank you. Hello, Adam. Hey, you guys are coming on. He's they're coming on next. That's right. Um, everyone is making uh, 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 their creations and discussing. They're in, a, they're in breakout groups doing game yeah. design. More five minutes, and we uh, get them back. So we can discuss. And after that, after they they created uh, an artifact, um, playing the game properly, we're going to read out 
and discuss it, uh, all the, the creations, and we vote. What are uh, using these this, um, guidelines on how to vote? For example, uh, the further in the future, the more absurd or different is the solution. So 25 years from now, it will be a, a, a really uh, different solution. Uh, now thinking about my first draft idea, uh, the, the satellites, it's pretty achievable right now. So maybe the scientists come out with a microchip that collects data from a collective mind, um, a free uh, network uh, connected, connecting minds uh, from everyone in everywhere so we can achieve and access uh, in a faster uh, way uh, the whole different uh, uh, types of knowledge. So like, like Matrix, like uh, I wanted to know um, uh, quantum physics so I can maybe download that information from someone's mind directly to my mind. So I will solve uh, the, the accessibility problem, for example. You see the, the, what I did here? So the further in the future, the more absurd or different is the solution. When, uh, another guideline is about the problem. Uh, we have to address specific aspects of the problem a context that we are trying to achieve with the solution. So it's important to, in the news from the future, we can write down uh, uh, a small uh, text uh, uh, um, saying about uh, how hard it is to people to uh, access that and how that technology uh, solved the problem and maybe writing down some specifics um, about maybe a geography or or um, how class how the methods that we are using to 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 educate our kids were not uh, a good one, and and how that solution uh, uh, solved the problem. So, and the guideline for people and for voting, it's we have to think like the professionals, or maybe use those, the, their tools and methods. Uh, if I were a scientist, maybe uh, that solution of a microchip is the the 10th version of uh, uh, that uh, technology because I used a scientific method of research to achieve that. So it's important to uh, speak out and use and think like the, the professionals. Um, the projects, we, we're going to vote how feasible the solution shows itself with the type of project. So it's an engineering problem uh, project. If we're a gaming project, I have to, to be specific, trying to, to uh, say how that game works, how that technology works, how, anyway. And the perspective is the representation. So if it's a well-written news from the future, it maybe can win my vote because it's well-written and it's uh, 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 tangible with quality uh, uh, expect, expected from a news from the future. So that's it. That's the, the guidelines of the game. We can invite back everyone maybe, and discuss in the last five minutes. We have them coming back now. Nice, nice. It's the fourth year, I think, that I'm hosting this game at uh, one event, the third one from uh, at uh, World Features Day. And it's always amazing how people can be imaginative and how the, the collective uh, uh, thinking can come out with uh, amazing ideas just like that in 10 minutes. Uh, it's, it's amazing. So let's see. Let's see everyone getting back in the next 10 seconds now. Let me show you this statement. And I'm going to ask people to write down at the chat at least the headline of what is the solution that they came out with. They design. 
Hello, I can see Beth. Um, everyone is getting back. I know it was quickly, everyone. <laughs> I know that you wanted more time, uh, but it's, it's just a, a, a quick play of the game. Uh, later, I can I can uh, give you the the free version of the game. Again, you can reach out, and I will send you the links. Uh, let me just for everyone to reach out. Let me give my email here. Let me just write down here. Okay. Let me pick my email the right address so we can reach out later and ask me for the game okay let me just get my email i always forget my, the address okay here it goes later send me an email i will send you the game but now i'm interested in see what were the solutions that we you guys and girls developed um let us let us read uh chandran a medical agriculturalist laid a foundation of flex learning degree program enable learning process res registration by piadio scientists Piad pediatrician oh, sorry for my lame english but uh, uh, those are really hard yeah. <laughs> words for yeah, me it's a, it's a pediatrician Okay. Uh, come as scientists. So a pediatrician and a scientist nice. both merge together. Nice. And a statistician. Statistician. Statist. Awesome. Statistician. Nice. nice. So they come out with this a foundation with flex learning, a degree program. Nice. Mm -hmm. Nice. Amna um, here. Um, Headline is STEAM. Um, Can you read them now, maybe? Yes, so it's basically STEAM, but the E is squared. So the second E is for ethics. And we also went the next Whoa. step and got a description with some help from uh, un sources that we will not be revealing. However, <laughs> as scientists, you know, that's, that's the whole part of being mysterious. But basically, right. it's going to be a revolutionary approach that adds a dash of vacuness to the traditional STEM or STEAM curriculum. And we're including ethics, where students embark on philosophical quests to ponder life's most perplexing questions. Who knew that debating the morality of a picture of Mona Lisa with a robot arm or the starry night set against a backdrop of swirling equations could be so riveting? Hopefully I pronounced that last word correctly. Oh, that's amazing. That's amazing. That that's something that I really wanted to see. It was very elegant. The the number two, <laughs> adding oh, ethics. Oh yeah, that is the um. All credit goes to my um team member. Where are you? I don't see you. Where is my team member right here? Okay, I can't see her, but she's here. Let me just stop sharing my screen and we can find out. Okay, okay so he's right here. So it's, if I'm hopefully pronouncing her name correctly, Patricius, is that how you pronounce your name? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> okay, so yeah, this was I mean, her amazing idea. Yes. Yes. Okay, okay I can't, can't run the camera. Um. Yes, I was I was telling Amna so this is so exciting. I just retired after 47 years of teaching Whoa. and future problem solving, but for 20 of those years I have been teaching a course I developed that I call Brave New World: What Does It Mean to Be Human in a Technologically an Increasingly Technological World? And I do this with middle school students on purpose. Uh, it's a good age and we do the ethics part of it. So I keep saying I'm taking it from STEM to STEAM to STEM squared. And I'm the new how to make the little two. I couldn't do that. But I, <laughs> that's what I keep trying to tell people I do. And it's been so exciting because the kids will stay in touch with me. I tell them they're my babies forever. And they, um, <laughs> they'll they go back and say, I just thought you were the crazy Twilight Zone lady or whatever, but this is happening now. Um, I always start a topic like, 
like the first thing I did was show them there's an old movie with John Travolta called Face Off and they switched yeah. face. And we talk about why would anybody, you know, do that? Well, then somebody looked at me and said, you're going to get fired. Well, the news that night was the first face transplant ever done. I said, can't fire me now. It's it's news. And we talk about why they would do that and, you know, prosthetic hands. And my favorite lesson is when I have students talk about um, with genetic engineering you know, and all that stuff. What if they had a baby that was a clone of themselves? How would they raise it? Would they... Yeah. Would they, if they knew they were a great piano player, would they start making their baby take piano lessons like as a one-year-old or would they avoid it? Because, you know, so so we get into discussions like that. But uh, but that was a joy with Amna and thinking about this idea. So thanks for the time. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Um, let me see if we have another uh, uh, news from the future. Uh, five years later, experimenting in schools hit scale. Scientists drive educational access beyond 2015 go. Awesome, awesome. So it sparks, the game has this go to sparks uh, discussion, to sparks creativity, critical thinking. And again, it don't depends or is directed to any profession. It's for everyone. It's a game that I made to play with my kids back in COVID. That's the, the, the main goal of the game. I made the game to play with my kids, my uh, seven year old at the time and 10 year, 11 year old kid uh, at the time. And it was a way to think about the future and to make them think in optimistic visions for their futures. And it came out yeah, being that game it is free for you, for everyone to, to play. Again, send me an email. I will send you the free version of the game. I hope that uh, it made sense for you, for everyone. And I'm really thank you, uh, thankful for everyone to be part of it. Thank you for Amna uh, for being such an amazing co-host. And Lisa and everyone in Teach the Future for still uh, thinking that I'm a good person to be <laughs> a member of Think, uh, Teach the Future. <laughs> I'm really glad to be part of it. Oh, there's another uh, news here. Um, oh, it's popping out a lot of different news from the future. We don't, we, we will don't have the time to read it, but thank you for, for doing that. Uh, I will read it later with more patience. <laughs> okay, Daniel, I want to thank you and Amna for a very exciting session, uh, very involving. We are going to be publishing the, the chat across all the sessions. So if you can